Hey V gang, it's a girl V Melancy and welcome back to my YouTube channel. So on this episode, as you can tell by the title, I will be looking at what you need to know before you go and study abroad. And if you're interested in something like this, stay tuned for more. I'll be right back. If this is your first time coming through to my channel, I'd like to say welcome. Thank you so much for coming through. Remember to like, subscribe, and comment. And if you're a regular subby, welcome back. So I know it's a dream for many students and many young people to be free of their parents and to go far, far away and study abroad. And it sounds really cool and really exciting. Yeah, freedom. But there's a lot of things that you need to consider before you do go on that journey of studying abroad and this video is just to shed more light on the actual realities of studying abroad and without further ado, let's get started! <laughs> that you actually need to check before you go to your designated paradise freedom entity is what is the weather like oh my goodness me coming from africa or okay i'm gonna use the african example because that's where i was coming from and you don't know what the weather really is like i mean people do tell you but i sometimes you don't really do as adequate and enough research as possible and I was going to a country which was going through winter at the time. So winter in Zimbabwe and winter in Europe are two different types of winter. So I just say figure out what weather pattern is happening in your country. Be aware of the changes, the significant changes. You need to be aware of the cost of living. So when you're at home, everything is provided for. But when you're abroad, you are kind of working on a budget. So you need to know what the cost of living is, how much rent is, how much uh, general accommodation, whether it's not rent or staying on campus, how much it is, how much food is, how much... Uh, bedding and sheets and like I mean there's so many things that cover cost of living so you need to look at the whole thing do your research google it just google it and you should have as much information as you can prior beforehand which brings me to my next point you need to sit down with your parents once you ha once you have the cost of living the cost of tuition unless of course you're on scholarship how much money will your parents need to invest for you to leave where you are and go to your next destination you need to have a very open discussion with actual figures my school fees per year is five thousand euro ten thousand euro I mean, yeah, unless of course you're going to America or Canada or like, yeah, Australia, then it's like 20,000 euro or Australian dollars or Canadian dollars or US dollar, however amount it is, you need to sit down and have an open discussion about what they can do and what they can't do, which means when you have that information, you can go back and revise your destinations and your places that you want to go to and what you want to study and how much it would cost them because there's no point in pressurizing your parents to take you to uni to a place that they cannot afford as the period as the years go by and then you know it's too difficult for them you need to check what the immigration laws are of that country that means what it would take you to get your papers in check do you need to get your student permit before you leave your country of origin do you need to get your student permit when you're in that country like you know if you're studying if you're not a south african and you want to study in south africa you get your student permit from your country you don't get your student permit in the country you get so other places you get the paper at the embassy in your country and other places you get the papers from the country when you get there so what do i need to get to that country do i just need a visa do i need a student permit do i need a tourist visa what type of a visa is it supposed to be and when i get there what do i need to do in order to get my papers in check so it's like it's such a long process and i feel like these are things that people don't really take into consideration it's just a matter of i'm gonna go and i'm gonna do my thing but you need to have adequate information as to, so that you know what you're supposed to do when you get there of course you know there's orientation and they kind of tell you the stuff that you're supposed to do and stuff that you're not supposed to do but in the event let's say you miss orientation week now you have to catch up and this is based on information that you're being given by other peers 
who may or may not know adequate information. So it's just important, go on the school website, go to the immigration website of that country, see what they, under a student, what you're supposed to have, what you're supposed to do, what you're not supposed to do. EDC, EDC, everything should be explained there. You need to know what you're getting yourself into so that it's not coming by shock. Imagine you don't know, not that it's a bad thing, but you don't know that you're going to be getting medical checks every six months. You need a budget for that. So you don't want a situation whereby you leave your home country and then every six months you're not hustling your parents, you I need money for for medicals. You I need money for medical examinations. And, but this was not said in the beginning. So do adequate research about immigration laws. You need to also check the crime rate of that country. It's important for you to be safe so it's not just about i'm going to paradise and i'm going to have a good time and it's freedom and it's away from my family and all these many thoughts that young people have or whatever it's important that you take your safety very very important so check google it out the crime rate of so and so country and get enough knowledge before you go there it's also important just to know the national religion of that country before you go Okay, if I take the example of Cyprus, Cyprus is split into two, uh, the South Cyprus or North Cyprus. South Cyprus is the Christian side and North Cyprus is the Muslim side. And this is something I had to find out when I got onto the island. I didn't know this beforehand. Imagine going to a country and you're a Christian and they don't allow you to practice Christianity. What will you do? What is the main language used there? There is a perception that when you go to Europe, everybody speaks in english because i mean it's europe we were colonized by britain what well, most countries were so i mean they should be english speaking but that's not always the case you go to certain countries and their main language is not english you actually have to learn their language so it's important for you to do your research and know the country that i want to go to how fluent are they in english how fluent are they in french how fluent are they in portuguese depending with what your mother tongue is because maybe your university or institution does speak in english which is beautiful but in most cases the outside community does not speak as much english as those people inside the university and the institution so you have of course an international community and some people who do speak in english but the majority of the people outside of that community that you have found yourself in do not speak in english and it is so frustrating oh my gosh so just do your research and know the country that you're going to do they speak in english do they not speak in english i mean what is the alternative do i have to do lessons beforehand uh, do they speak fluently in french should i learn french before i go there i mean there's, these are things that you need to consider before you even leave the country so you also need to check is it a recognized country as i said before cyprus is split into two south cyprus or north cyprus south cyprus is recognized by the eu it is when you look up the republic of cyprus that is it you know it is recognized internationally and stuff north cyprus however is only recognized by turkey so that means every other nation does not recognize north cyprus as a country so it is very important that you actually get that information prior to leaving your home country and going to a foreign land to study because there's certain limitations to countries such as north cyprus that um are very frustrating for international students so i mean if you if people had this knowledge prior to going abroad you know just the idea of i'm leaving zimbabwe i'm leaving south africa i'm leaving zambia I'm, I'm leaving i'm going to cyprus but if they actually knew that north cyprus is not actually recognized internationally it is a country but it's not recognized and that's like a topic for another video which i will explain all of that but when it's out I will link it right here mm -hmm. and you guys can check it out and see uh, what it is that you don't know about North Cyprus or what it is that you don't know about Cyprus so that you are you are aware you know if that's where you are deciding to go for uni you need to know these things before you even leave your home country so it's also important to know what currency they use are they using euros are they using dollars are they using canadian dollars are they using australian dollars are they using zim dollar or bond note what type of currency are they using in their country so that is you, your parents are in line with your 
expenses because in the event that they are using zim dollar your parents need to know that if they're going to be paid in zim bond notes will they be able to be sending you every month i don't know 500 us dollar equivalent of zim bond notes which is a ridiculous amount of money as we speak right now and would they be able to get it within the regulations of the currency laws in zimbabwe so it's very important to have this honest discussion with your parents number one and to also know what currency is used so that the conversion rates your parents are clear as to how much of money they need to be spending in order for you to be comfortable wherever you are so it's absolutely important to research are there opportunities for students whilst you're still studying okay so you know some countries have laws that students can work whilst they are students and studying for a specific amount of hours per week which is kind of awesome you get to make an extra amount of money and in this country we'd say students are not allowed to work because they came on a student permit paper so that means you need to get a worker's permit in order for you to work so these are things that you need to know so that i mean as a student you need extra cash as much as you're getting money from home you need extra money for yourself so it's important for you to google are there any opportunities for young people uh who are studying right so after you have studied it's important to know other opportunities after you are done some countries offer opportunities for their students especially if you're like in the top 10 of your class the school will help you get a job and help you get settled in you can also choose to do your masters and there's i mean there's plenty of opportunities for you to choose from what exactly that you want to do then there's countries like cyprus and turkey which are so difficult for you to get a job once you have graduated it's either you go back home or you are doing your masters and further your education but i mean when are you going to make the money you get like okay you do your masters you do your undergrad you do your masters you do a phd when when did you make the money you get you also need time for you to make your own money you can't continue hustling your parents i mean it's awesome they can take you to school and make you further your education which is absolutely beautiful but you need to do something for yourself so you need to go to a place that you know when i'm done i can get a job i can fend for myself i can even pay for my own master's program or you can go to a place where school is not very expensive such that if you get a job you can still pay for yourself without hustling your parents or you can get opportunities to further your education whilst you're still working so getting a full scholarship doesn't affect you and your job so these are things that you absolutely as in absolutely need to know before you even embark i know people leave this to at the end you know i'm just gonna go it doesn't really matter after four years i'll figure it out now bro you need to know right now what it is i'm getting myself into because there's nothing more frustrating than finishing your degree and then after that it's what's now what am i supposed to do and that's where post-graduation depression comes in and i'm gonna link the video <laughs> for post-graduation depression right over here okay okay so accreditation of the school this means is the school internationally recognized is there a board that says we know this school the a university we know this university it is accredited according to the education laws of i don't know european union or american association of education i mean whatever type of board it is but it needs to be an internationally recognized board so that means you need to make sure that your school is recognized by the nation the, na the national board of uh, whatever it is the national <laughs> board of education or ministry of education of that country right and then if there's a regional board sometimes it is important for the regional board to also accredit that and then there's specific educational boards that are specifically set aside to accredit universities so when you go on a university page normally when you scroll down 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 there's all these like sponsors and partnership and accreditation but literally google is such and such university accredited and what number does it rank in university rankings and stuff like get adequate information about your university don't go to university because of its name don't go to university because of you know the culture there i mean literally go to university because of the specific program that you're applying for is it accredited is the university accredited what is the quality of the degree that i'm going there for like is 
and i absolutely get it there's such a rush and such a buzz of i'm done i need to leave but it's not enough when you're done and you've graduated there's so many things that will be left hanging that you need to do with before you even go for your deal but it's undergrad phd masters this applies for everybody you need to know these things before you decide to leave wherever you are based and go to another country you need to know that the university that you're going to is accredited by an international board international community uh local community regional co i mean there's so many things that put it together that make your degree internationally recognized it's also important just to know how long the program is before you go what's the point of applying for a program that you think is going to take three years and you end up taking six years and then they say it was written you know on the application paper and you sign for it and you're only realizing that when you get there and your parents had budgeted for three years and this is being extended to six years because i don't know a three-year degree turned to be six years in this particular country in this particular institution and that is what they do that is really really frustrating so for like let's say a degree in international relations in most countries it's three it's a three-year degree but in some countries it is actually four years so you need to know this before so that your parents are planning for four years of taking care of you not three so that there's no mishaps and no like you know misinformation and stuff which could lead to like problems considering that you know especially if you're not an only child there's other kids after you so if they have been budgeting that three years we're going to sacrifice and do this and this for you for the next three years then it turns out to be four years that means anyone else who was supposed to go for uni has to wait until you are done with the fourth year which is kind of unfair so it needs to be like you guys are on the same page from the get-go right it's very very important to think about can my parents take care of me and can they afford to send me abroad it's not just about buying the ticket paying tuition fee for the year and going no you need there's so much that comes into play when you're staying abroad when you're back home you're not paying range you're not buying food you're not buying clothes you're not buying uh blankets you're not buying mattresses you're not buying beds you're not buying tvs you're not buying laptops you know i mean you're not buying anything when you go abroad you are buying everything and if it's a, a situation whereby it's not even furnished you will need to buy a couch you will need to buy a heater if it's a very cold country you may need to put a heating system in your area so that you don't freeze staying abroad is actually very expensive so you need to talk to your parents so that you guys are on the same page university books are expensive i don't even know why they are so expensive so that's a whole budget on its own so in, in, in on top of all these other things that you need plus food now you need to be thinking about books otherwise if you don't have books you will fail and then there's no point for okay just have this conversation with your an honest honest conversation about can they afford taking you abroad so that you can have everything that you absolutely need what is the point of staying in a house with no curtains it doesn't make sense so this is what you need to know before you go study abroad thank you so much for watching my youtube video i hope it was informative and educative and elaborative enough i will see you in my next upload remember to like subscribe and comment and i will check you out later bye have an awesome 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 day